So I wanted to take some time to talk about a video published by Channel 5 News. Uh, I'm a little bit late to the party on this particular video. It was published, I believe, before the January 6th anniversary. But basically, Andrew Callahan got an interview with the QAnon shaman from prison. And to say that it was entertaining would be an understatement. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed every second of it. And I want to play a short clip. I don't necessarily want to you know show you this so you realize how crazy the QAnon shaman is i think that most people acknowledge that and he will say some really insane things in the clip that i'm about to play for you but i want you to just pay attention to the way that he speaks the way that he delivers this insane information because i think that this could yield insight into how so many people fall victim to conspiracy theories because if the QAnon shaman, after hearing him now, didn't talk about conspiracy theories. I would just assume this was a fully functioning, reasonable adult. It's only when he talks about these conspiracy theories that he kind of shows you how crazy he is. But if somebody like this is able to, I don't know, reach an audience of unsuspecting people who don't really know much about our political system, but they know something is wrong and the elites don't represent them, I could see how somebody could fall victim to QAnon and subscribe to QAnon. And perhaps people like this who are relatively charismatic are the drivers of this conspiracy theory. But either way, take a look at this clip here. Do you think that the more intense stuff in the Q universe, like elite Democrats drinking children's blood, is also real? Here's the thing about that. For thousands of years, that has been something that has been practiced by elite groups in high levels of occultic power. And the whole idea is that they terrified their victims to the point where their victims had an out-of-body experience. And in this out-of-body experience, their body filled with adrenaline, okay? And as their body filled with a bunch of adrenaline, they would end up killing the, the, the victim, sacrificing them to Saturn, okay? And in the process, their blood, their adrenalized blood would be drained and poured into like a, a chalice or something like that. And when they drank the blood, they were drinking something known as adrenochrome because once the adrenalized blood was hit with oxygen, it changed from, adrena it changed from uh, uh, adrenaline to adrenochrome. Okay, and if people don't believe that adrenochrome is real, all you got to do is watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, okay? Type in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas adrenochrome scene, and you will see that this is a very real thing, that you are able to harvest this, this chemical, this adrenalized blood, and drink it or, or ingest it, and it will be like a, an intense psychedelic high. And these individuals would end up using this uh, understanding that they had just for themselves and creating sort of like an elite group cast that kept everybody else marginalized and ruled. A lot of the time it was the same bloodlines that were moving from one empire to the other around the globe and erecting these empires based off of the same ritual magic. Okay, and uh, they would infiltrate the gene pools of certain ecosystems or certain nations, and, and then they would use these individuals uh, as they uh, infiltrated the gene pool. They would use their children as like higher level people in power, whether it be making them king or making them a prince or a duke or a sultan or whatever. So this is something that has been going on for quite some time. I mean, if you look into, you know, uh, the, how similar um, um, one of the, I forgot his first name, but uh, there was a certain Rockefeller that looks just like John Podesta. And John Podesta looks just like um, the singer from, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, from Lincoln Park. Um, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on his name. That's Chester her. Bennington. Chester Bennington, thank you. Yeah, they all yeah. look all, like strikingly similar. Okay, uh, Merkel in Germany looks just like Hitler. Um, Barbara Bush looks just like Aleister Crowley. What we are talking about is like a 6,000 year old death cult. Now I had to cut out a portion of what he said because it, this video would be too long and I don't want to play too much of the clip. I prefer that you watch it and support Channel 5. Um, but basically he explains how this whole practice of blood sucking elites has existed for a very long time and elites today are still practicing it and Donald Trump essentially was going to be the guy who gets in there and dismantles this cabal of blood-sucking elites, which of course includes Hillary Clinton. 
Um, and there's a lot in there. He talked about the, how there's sacrifices that are being being made to Saturn, uh, uh, time travel technology that wasn't in that clip, but it, it's it comes up earlier. I mean, things that are just batshit fucking insane. And, you know, uh, sprinkled in are actual conspiracies. And this is what Andrew Callahan addresses. You know, some of these things that you're talking about are true, but other things are incorrect. So... What's interesting to me is that this is how people are, you know, gravitating towards conspiracy theories. You lure them in with some things. Maybe the conspiracy that you cite is based off of a kernel of truth, and that's how you hook people, right? And this honestly was terrifying to me because this is somebody who is, I'm assuming, influential in Q circles. I mean, he talked about how he had a book published. He's the Q shaman, so he's known. So if somebody like this is the one who's disseminating these conspiracy theories, and if there's enough people who are at least half as charismatic as he is, half as capable of eloquently talking about these conspiracies, we're in a lot of danger as a country because you think of conspiracy theories and you probably, uh, or conspiracy theorists rather, and you probably are thinking of Alex Jones, people with tinfoil hats, but because of the internet, people who are competent at speaking and delivering a message have risen to the top. And it is not shocking to me that people would buy into the message after hearing someone like the QAnon shaman. People who don't know better, as I stated, they are absolutely going to fall for this. And perhaps they don't agree with everything. Maybe some of the things that he says are a bit outlandish. But if they could just, you know, um, accept 50% of what he's saying, that at least opens their mind to conspiratorial thinking and then that's all they need and they're you know down the rabbit hole five months later they believe in pizzagate and QAnon, and it's uh it's frightening because you know uh, throughout the year as i've learned more and more about how QAnon has ruined the lives of people in the united states it's it's ripped families apart i've been thinking of ways to de-radicalize people and as time goes on, I'm more perplexed. I don't know. And after hearing this, it just feels like if these are the folks who are spreading these conspiracy theories, I don't know how you de-radicalize people. I genuinely don't know. Because somebody who has facts, somebody who's charismatic, if they were to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody like uh, the Q shaman in a debate, it's very possible that the QAnon shaman would win, not because he's correct on the facts, but because he is able to articulate a message that is at a minimum entertaining, but he has an answer to everything. And this is the thing about all types of conspiracy theorists, you know, and this is why I think debates to a degree are useless, even if there's some value in them. You know, a flat earther is probably the low hanging fruit, at least seemingly when it comes to conspiracy theorists, because it's it's dumb. Most people reject it. But if you listen to a flat earther, they have an answer to everything. They've done uh, research into their opposition and they know what your responses are going to be. So they know how to rebut your arguments and their responses are, are just batshit fucking insane. But the fact that they're confident, the fact that in their delivery, they're capable that is what I think is in large part driving these conspiracies. And again, it's not like they've got to get you 100%. But if this QAnon shaman, for example, um, is introduced to someone, and maybe at first, you know, they have their guard up, but some things resonate with them. That's it. They got you like that. So, I don't know. Like, this was entertaining to me, but it was terrifying in the sense that we're up against really a lot um here as a country as as a species really uh because these conspiracy theorists are getting worse and worse and the people who deliver said conspiracy theories are more talented than uh we give them credit for often they are more capable of convincing people than you'd think i mean if they weren't talented so many people wouldn't be convinced so uh, you know i don't know what to say um, after he gets out of prison, he's serving 41 months. He says he plans to, you know, write a book and he's probably going to be a social media icon, assuming Q still exists when he's out of prison, which I'm guessing it will. Uh, so, uh, it's, this was horrifying and I really want people to watch this knowing that it's going to be kind of, uh, depressing because the people who spread misinformation, they don't seem, at face value, they don't seem 
cuckoo. Their ideas are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But, you know, this is going to convince a lot of people. A large portion of the population can believe anything. I mean, last year they had the um, meeting in Dallas where hundreds, if not, you know, a thousand QAnon people believed that JFK was going to reveal that he's been alive all this time and he's running for president on the same ticket as Donald Trump. If you can get people to believe that, you can literally get them to believe anything. And when you have people as articulate and eloquent as the QAnon shaman delivering these messages, holy shit, that can be really fucking dangerous. So I don't know what to say. There's not really a point to this video other than watch the interview because it's really entertaining and beware because conspiracy theories aren't going to get better in this country. If anything, they're going to be a lot more prominent in the years to come. Tremendous, 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 tremendous